Sí. <laughs> Let me thank um Renee for sending me this article. Uh, I want to share with y'all. This is very good. Um, in fact, it's a very, very. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a very good article for more than one reason. Okay, just just put it like that. Um, I want to share it with y'all because a lot of times we don't hear stuff like this. Um, because a lot of our circles are so limited, and this is a person that had the opportunity, uh, Lori Larkin, that um. Um, you know, had 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 a, has a, a very eclectic group and a and a good circle. So she was able to do this, and I want to share it with y'all. And she goes, uh, "Yesterday, I was tagged in a post by an old high school friend asking me and a few others a very public, direct question about white privilege and racism. I feel compelled not to only publish this query." but also my response to it, as it may be a helpful discourse for more than just a handful of folks on Facebook. So here's his post. Uh, to all of my black or mixed race Facebook friends, I must profess a blissful ignorance of this white privilege, of which I am apparently guilty of possessing. By not being able to fully put myself in the shoes of someone from a background, race, religion, gender, nationality, body type that differs from my own makes me part of the problem according to what I'm now hearing. Despite my treating everyone with respect and humor my entire life, as far as I know, I'm somehow complicit in the misfortune of others. I'm not saying I'm colorblind, but whatever racism, sexism, other isms my life experience has instilled in me stays within me and is not manifested in the way I treat others, which is why, which is not the case with far too many. And I know this. So, that I may be enlightened, can you please share with me some example of institutional racism that have made an inevitable mark upon you? If I am to understand this, then I need people to know personally to show me how I am missing the point and, and missing what's going on. Personal examples only, not trying to be too insensitive. I only want to understand, but not from the media. I apologize if this comes off as crass or offends anyone. I personally um, respect the spirit and the manner of the writer of this uh, sincere um, thought. But anyway, here's my response from the author, from the person that wrote back. Hi, Jason. First off, I hope you don't mind that I've quoted your post and made it part of mine. I think the heart of what you've asked of your friends of color is extremely important. And I think my response needs much more space than as a reply on your feed. I truly thank you for wanting to understand what you are having a hard time understanding. Coincidentally, over the last few days, I have been thinking about sharing some of the incidents of prejudice, racism I've experienced in my lifetime. In fact, I just spoke with my sister, Lessa, about how best to do this yesterday because I realized many of my friends, especially the white ones, have no idea what I've experienced or dealt with unless they were present and aware when it happened. There are two reasons for this. Number one, because not only as human beings do I suppress uh, the painful and uncomfortable in an effort to make it go away, I was also taught within my community. I was raised in the 70s and 80s. It's shifted somewhat now. And by society, at large, not to make a fuss, not to speak out or rock the boat. Just deal with it. Less more trouble follow, which sadly it often does. Two, 
fear of being questioned or dismissed with, are you sure that's what you heard? Or are you sure that's what they meant? And being angered and upset by it all over again. By well-meaning but hurtful and essentially unsupportive responses. So again, I'm glad you asked because I really want to answer. But as I do, please know a few things. First, number one, this is not even close to the whole list. But I'm cherry picking because none of us have all day. And two, I've been really lucky. Most of what I share below is mild compared to what others in my family and community have endured. I'm going to go in chronological order so that you may begin to glimpse the tonage and why what many white folk might feel as where did all of this come from moment in society has been festering individually and collectively for a lifetime of pretty much every black or brown person living in America today, regardless of their wealth or opportunity. Huh. For, and some of what I share covers sexism too. Intersectionally is another term that I'm sure you've heard and want to put quotes around, but it's a real thing too, just like white privilege. But you've requested a focus on personal experiences with racism. So here it goes. Number one, when I was three, my family moved to an upper middle class, all white neighborhood. We had a big backyard. So my parents built a pool. Not the only pool on the block, but the only one neighbor's boys. But only one of the neighbor's boys started throwing rocks into it. White boys. Um, one day, my mom ID one as the boy from across the street, went to his house, told his mother, and fortunately, his mother believed mine. My mom not only got an apology, but also had that boy jump in our pool and retrieve every single rock. So, no more rocks after that. Then my mom even invited him to come over and swim sometime if he asked permission. Everyone became friends. This one has a happy ending because my mom was and is a badass about matters like these. But I hope you can see that the white privilege in this situation is being able to move into a nice neighborhood and be accepted, not harassed, and made to feel unwelcome and even prone to acts of vandalism and hostility. Two, when my older sister was five, a white boy named Mark called her a nigger after she beat him in a race at school. She didn't even know what it meant, but in her gut, she knew it was something bad. This was the first time I see my father, the kind of angry that has nowhere to go. I somehow understood it. It was because not only had some boy verbally assaulted his daughter and gotten away with it, it had way too early introduced her and me to that term and the reality of what it meant. That some white people would be cruel and careless with other people's feelings just because of our skin color or our achievements. If it's unclear in any way, the point here is that if you've never had a defining moment in your childhood or your life where you realize that your skin color alone makes people hate you, then you got white privilege. Three, sophomore year in high school, I had Mr. Melrose for algebra, too. Sometime within the first few weeks of his class, he points out that I'm the only spook in the class. This was meant to be funny, but it wasn't. So I doubt that it will surprise you that uh, I was 
relieved when he took medical leave after suffering a heart attack and was replaced by a sub for the rest of the semester. The point here is that if you've never been the only one of your race in a class, at a party, on a job, etc., and or it's been pointed out to you in a playful fashion by the authority figure in a said situation, then guess what? That's white privilege. Four. When we started getting our college accepted senior year, I remember some white male classmate pissed that another black classmate had gotten into UCLA while they didn't. And then they said that affirmative action had given them their spot, had given him their spot, and that it wasn't fair. An actual friend of theirs who worked his ass off to the point, so the point here is if you've never been on the receiving end of the assumption that when you've achieved something, it's only because it was taken from a white person or who actually deserved it and given to you. Well, that's white privilege. Number five, when I got accepted into Harvard as a fellow AP student, you were a witness to what an academic beast I was in high school already, right? Yes. Three separate times I encountered white strangers as I prepped for my maiden trip to Cambridge that rankled to this day. The first was the white doctor giving me a physical at Kaiser, me. I need to send an immunization report to my college so I can matriculate. The doctor, where are you going? Me. I'm going to Harvard. Doctor, you mean the one in Massachusetts? <laughs> the second was in a store looking for supplies I needed from Harvard, suggested what to bring with you list. The store employee said, where are you going? To me, Harvard, store employee. You mean the one in Massachusetts? The third was at UPS, shipping off boxes. They said what to bring to Harvard. I was in line behind a white boy mailing boxes to Princeton. And in front of a white woman sending her child's boxes to wherever. Woman to the boy. What college are you going to? The boy. Princeton. Woman. Congratulations. Woman to me. Where are you sending your boxes? Me. Harvard. The woman. You mean the one in Massachusetts, I think? I'm like, no, bitch. The one in downtown next to the liquor store. But I say, I guess you're to my label boxes. Yes, the one in Massachusetts. And then she says something like, congratulations. But it's too fucking late now. The point here is that if no one has ever questioned your intellectual capabilities or attendance in an elite institution solely based on your skin color, that, my friend, is white privilege. Oh, I ain't finished. Number six. In my... Freshman college tutorial, our small group of four or five was assigned to read Thoreau, Emerson, Malcolm X, Joseph Conrad, Dreiser, etc. When it was weak to discuss the autobiography of Malcolm X, one white boy boldly claimed he couldn't even get through it because he couldn't relate and didn't think he should be forced to read it. I don't remember the words I said, but I still remember the feeling. I think it's what the doctor refers to as chandelier pain. As soon as a sensitive area on the patient is touched, they shoot through the roof. And that's what I felt. I know I said something like my whole life. I've had to read things that don't have anything to do with me or any damn thing that I relate to. 
But I find a way anyway because that's what learning is all about. Trying to understand from another person's perspective. The point here is the canon of literature studied in the United States as well as the majority of television movies have focused primarily on the works or the achievements of white men. So if you have never experienced or considered how damaging it is, was, or could be to grow up without myriad of role models and images in school that reflect you in your required reading material or in the mainstream media, baby, that, my friend, is white privilege. <laughs> Oh, now you want to move away, huh? No, 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 no. Let's finish. All seniors, this is number seven, at Harvard are invited to a fancy seated group lunch with our respective dorm masters. Yes, they are called masters up until this February when they changed it to faculty deans. But that's just a, t a little uh, a tasty little side dish when it comes to the main course of this remembrance. While we were being served by the Dunster House cafeteria staff, the black ladies from Haiti and Boston that ran the line daily. <laughs> Listen to this again. The black ladies from Haiti and Boston that ran that line daily. I still remember Jackie's kindness and warmth to this day. Master Sally mused out loud how proud they must be to be serving the nation's best and the brightest. I don't know if they heard her, but I did, and it made me so uncomfortable and sick. The point here is, if you've never been blindsided when you are just trying to enjoy a meal by a well-paid faculty member patronizing and racist assumptions about how grateful black people must feel to be in their goddamn presence, then you have white privilege. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> while writing on a television show in my 30s my new white male boss who had only known me for a few days now had unbeknownst to me told another writer on the staff that he thought I was conceited didn't know as much as I thought I did and didn't have the talent that I thought I had and what exactly had happened in those few days I disagree with a pitch where he suggested our lead female character carelessly leave a potholder on the stove and burn down her apartment. This character being a professional caterer. When what he said about me was revealed months later. By then he come up to respect and rely on me. He apologized for prejudicing me because I am a black woman. I told him he was ignorant and clearly had a lot to learn. It was a good talk because he was remorseful and open. But the point here is, if you've never been on the receiving end of a boss's prejudice, uninformed, how dare she question my ideas, bad mouthing based on solely on his ego and your race. Because I know what happens now. But if it's based solely on his ego and your race. That, my dear, again, is white privilege. Ah, uh, boy. <laughs> Number nine. On my first date with my now husband, I climbed into his car and saw baby wipes on the passenger side floor. He said he didn't have kids. They were just there to clean up the messes in his car. I twisted to secure my seatbelt and saw a stuffed animal in the rear window. I gave him a look. He said, I promise I don't have kids. That's only there so I don't get stopped by the police. He then told me that when he drove home from work late at night, he was getting stopped by cops constantly because he was a black man in a luxury car. And they assumed it was either stolen or that he was a drug dealer. When he told a cop friend about this, 
he told Warren to put a stuffed animal in the rear window because it would change his profile to that of a family man. And he was much less likely to be stopped. The point here is, is if you've never had to mask the fruits of your success with a floppy ear stuffed bunny rabbit so you don't have to get harassed by cops on the way home from your gainful employment or never had a first date start this way, guess what? Y'all answer it. <laughs> That's right. You have white privilege. Lastly, you guys, six years ago, I started a Facebook page that has grown into a website called Good Black News because I was shocked to find that there was no sites dedicated solely to publishing the positive things that black people do. And let me explain here to show how biased the coverage and mainstream media is in case you don't already have a clue. As I curate, I can't tell you how often I have to swap out a story photo and make it as positive as the content. Photos published of black folks in mainstream medium are very often sullen or angry looking, even when it's a positive story. So I have to constantly alter headlines to, number one, include a person's name and not have it be just a black man wins settlement or Carney Hall gets the first black board member or uh, rephrase it with a subtle, a subtle subject uh, gator like ABC taps Viola Davis as series lead to Viola Davis lands a lead on ABC show as is done for, say, Jennifer Aniston or Steven Spielberg. I also receive a fair amount of highly offensive racist trolling. I don't even respond. I block and I delete right away. The point here is not having to rewrite stories, headlines, or swap photos while being trolled by racists when all you're trying to do on a daily basis is promote positively, positivity and share stories of hope and achievement and justice. If you don't have to rewrite those stories, that's white privilege. Okay, Jason, there's more, but I'm exhausted, and my kids need dinner. <laughs> Remembering and reliving many of these moments has been a strain and a drain, and again, this ain't even half or the worst of it. But I hope my experiences shed some light on you on how institutional and personal racism has affected the entire life of a friend of yours to whom you have only been respectful and kind to. I hope what I've shared with you make you realize that it's not just strangers, but people you know and care about who have suffered and are suffering because we are excluded from the privilege you have to not be judged, questioned, or assaulted in any way just because of your race. As to you being part of the problem, trust me, nobody's mad at you for being white. Nobody, just like nobody should be mad at me for being black or female or whatever. But what is being asked of you is to acknowledge that white privilege does exist and to not only treat people of other races uh, different than yours with respect and humor, but not just to treat them like that, but to also stand up for fair treatment and justice and not let jokes or off-color comments by friends, co-workers, and family slide by without getting checked and without the challenge. And to continually make an effort to put yourself in someone else's shoes or as the native says, put your foot in somebody else's moccasin. So when we, so we may all cherish and respect our unique and special con contributions to society as much as we do our common ground. With much love and respect, Lori. Thank you. Thank you for the article.
Tell me what y'all think. You might have your own experiences. Of what white privilege looks like to you. Maybe I didn't cover it in this. Let me uh, see what you're thinking. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to the channel. Um, let's do some housekeeping. Y'all can look at the lower bar and let me show you how to hit me up. Send me an email. Make a donation to the channel. I would appreciate it very much. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next video.